Alright, had an aggravating problem with this Craftsman air compressor. I'll list the part numbers and stuff in the description, but I took the pressure um, switch off to clean the contacts. But when it when you unscrew the pressure switch, it kind of all blows apart. So it took me a while to figure out how it goes back together. So I wanted to share with you guys how it goes back together. Okay, you get your spring down with the adjustment screw. Take the plastic cap off, mark the screw. I counted full, eight full turns counterclockwise to back off all the spring pressure. This little plastic piece, this is the top piece that you see moving near the wire connectors. Just slides right down through the middle. Once you have that plastic piece out, then you can take some emery cloth push down the contact points and just clean that up a little bit this bad boy here is tripping the breaker I'm trying to figure out why, I think it might be a start capacitor but I'm trying to clean everything up so that goes back down in the middle And now the tricky part. This little assembly here. This is the pressure relief tab that comes up the side. There's a spring. The spring only hooks with this piece vertical, so it's not like you can attach it later. That's the spring that gives you a lot of problems. That dimple right here rests on this diaphragm. Okay, let's see if I can do this one-handed. All right, so this piece is going to rest down in there. Here, I can just take it off, spring off. So this piece is going to rest in there like that. Sorry, it's a little bit clumsy. Now it's not going to want to stay like that once you have the, the spring hooked up. But this little little spring here is what makes contact with the, the plastic piece to close the contacts. So you have that piece in there like that. Then you have that little white piece that will slide on the outside of this to shield out dirt I suppose. Bear with me one second here while I pick up the other piece. I'm going to take this and catch this lip right here on the spring, hold it flat, bear with me one more second, I can't do that one handed, and hold the camera at the same time. Okay, so now I have that spring hooked up. So what you're going to want to do is slide this back in place so the spring makes contact with this dimple right here. And then the end of the metal piece, you can see the little groove it fits in right there. It's a shallow groove on both sides, but it will fit into place but you're going to be fighting the spring pressure the whole time as it stretches that out. So you got to hold that down tight. Now I'll, I'll show you the trick with two little wire ties and how to hold that all together. So bear with me one more second. Oh, hopefully you can see this. All right. So I just put that back lip in. Now this piece is going to fight me with the spring. Take my needle nose. Bend it away while holding that end down with that small lip. Bend it away and it will kind of snap right down in place. Like I said, I have all the spring pressure off the adjustment screw. 
I counted eight full turns out. Now that that's all together, oh, that's the noise you don't want to hear. That's the edge of that large plate slipping off of that little lip. So, just put that lip back in. The spring is not touching. Take your needle nose, snap it over. Oops, that didn't work that time either. Okay. Hold that down tight. That piece is going to stand up. Small spring still connected. Flip it over. Now it's all together. Sorry if you couldn't see that. But it's all together. That piece there, grab with the needle nose pliers to rotate clockwise from this view to snap it in place because it wants to stand up and go counterclockwise. So now that I have that lip in there, there's really no way you can screw this back on here without everything seated like that. And there's that sound again. Moral of the story is. Once you're holding it all together, like so, it's not together right now. You can see the lip isn't lined up. But once you have it together, you can hold it with hand pressure fine, as long as you're not trying to film it. And just two cable ties, pull them real tight, and it'll hold that lip shut. Flip it upside down, and you can screw it back down in place. Gotta angle it in. So little tab hits that pressure release valve. Don't forget to put that little white part on to show out the dirt from that hole right there. But once you're holding that in, and that these lips are in here, the spring's in the right space there, cable tie will hold it down just fine. So you can start your screws, cut that, pull it out. That's what I finally figured out. It took me a while. It's kind of frustrating. But good luck. I might post more videos once I find out what's wrong with the motor over there. Like I said, I took the capacitor assembly off the back and the uh, the over little overload, and I think the um, the 400 microfarad capacitor is bad. I'm not sure if that's the run or start. It's probably the start. But uh, my capacitor meter isn't reading nearly high enough. Even though it's a capital MFD, that irritates me. That would be technically megafarad, but a megafarad capacitor would be huge. So, just be a, must be a capital M for micro, rather than small M, which would be milli. But, good luck with this. If you ever decided to take your pressure switch apart, I'll post the uh, part numbers and model number of this compressor. But, wanted to share.